sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. No need for the sunlight in heaven, we're told. The light of that world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light in the city of gold. The light of that world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Amen. All right, amen. All right, Judges chapter 10 this morning. Judges chapter number 10. Following the death of Abimelech, there's a, a period of about 45 years of quietness under the next two judges that we're going to look at. After these next two judges is a period characterized by almost utter abandonment of the people to idolatry. And that's what's going on here in chapter 10. And let's uh, read verses 1 and 2. And after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel 23 years and died and was buried in Shamir. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day today. Pray, Lord, that you just help us as we open your book. Lord, we pray that you would just help us to get something out of your word this morning. A lot of historical stuff, Lord, and pray that you just help us as we teach it. Pray that you're, you would go forth, help the hearers today. Uh, pray that you bless them. Thank you for these that have come out this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the first, no, we got to get our other erase board here. I always forget this one. Let me set it up right here. So you have Tola. Remember that Abimelech's been erased from the history because he was not chosen of God. Neither was he chosen by the people of Israel as a whole. He was set up by the Shechemites. And of course, uh, there was turmoil inside and uh, it blew up from within, so to speak. And so he is, he is not the first king uh, over Israel. And, he, and neither was he a judge. So we fixed uh, what they are, because uh, uh, I had uh, number five was Bayrak, but Bayrak was actually a deliverer, he was not a judge. And so, but now we're, we're set on Tola, and there's really not much history about Tola. E even in your history books and the sources that I go to, there's not really much about him. And so, verses 1 and 2, we're back, right back on track for the, the pattern that is set in this book. After the fiasco with Abimelech, God raised up the sixth judge. Tola arose to defend Israel. This time, though, there was no mention of any major attack by heathen nation. The implication is that Tola armed the people and kept them ready in case of an invasion so nobody would attack them. And the, the name, of course, Tola means crimson worm. <laughs> How would you like to have that name? <laughs> Crimson Worm. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. I don't know if I would like that name or not, but, but of course, I've been called a worm for 20 years. <laughs> 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 
so <laughs> now that name's passed on to my boys, <laughs> you see? So that's good. Uh, <laughs> but his name means crimson worm. And uh, Tola had the same name as one of the sons of Issachar who migrated to Egypt with Jacob. Look at Genesis 46. Genesis chapter 46. And it does say that Tola here in chapter 10 verse 1, he is a man of Issachar. And so it would, it would fit. It's not the same uh, as the one that went with Jacob though, but Genesis 46. And look at verse 13. And the sons of Issachar, Tola, and Ephuva, and Job, and Shemron. And so, now this is not the same Job <laughs> that's the book of Job. This is a different one. And so, so actually, it could be, actually. I have, to, I have to look into that more. And so, all right, so now, now look at verse 1 back at Judges chapter 10. And it says, and after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir, Mount Ephraim. So uh, Pua is actually the same name as Fuva here in Genesis 46. It's just a little bit different spelling, but both spellings mean the same thing. And so, and... Of course, I didn't put down the name of his name, which doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. I think Pua actually is another is a color. It means some kind of a color, and I forgot to write it down. I don't remember, but it's interesting to note that both Tola and Pua, his father, are names of colors. It's said, and they occur together here, and that from the sons of Issachar in G Genesis 46. Now, Fuva is another spelling of Pua, and the reason. And we know that is is First Chronicles chapter seven. Look at this. That's why we know that it's the same spelling means the same thing. It's First Chronicles chapter seven. Look at verse one. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua. See, same person, Jashub and Shemron, four, and the sons of Tola, Uzi, Uzi and Rephiah and J Jeriel, Jarmai and Jibsam and Shemuel, heads of their father's house, to wit of Tola. They were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David, two and twenty thousand six hundred. So that was in the days of David there. So there's a, there is a, a, at least two of, of that name. And that's all you get from Tola. That's all there is. Back to Judges. What was the guy's name that, with Gideon, that went up to, down to the camp to the camp? Uh, let's see. Was it Gideon? Gideon? That, that went with him with... Uh, when they went up to spy out... He wanted to get in, and you never. Mm -hmm. what would it be? Uh, let me see. That's Orb and Zeb. Something like that. Sorry to interrupt you, but. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. Why am I not seeing it? Is it one of the ten men of the servants that he took with no. him? No, he was a oh, It was the, his armor bearer. Yeah, Gideon was scared to, uh, to go up there and um, his armor bearer went up. Uh, Fura, yeah, Fura, verse 11 of chapter 7. Then went down with him Fura, his servant. So Fura and and Fuva, oh, okay. it, it, it could, it, it could still mean the same thing. I'm not sure. 
All right, now the next judge. Now, and, now, and he judged Israel, verse 2, and he judged Israel 23 years and died and was buried in Shamir. Now, Shamir, um, I didn't ha I have anything in my notes, but Shamir is right here, and that is modern-day Samaria. So, Shamir and Samaria, that was what it was called before it was called Samaria. And so uh, that, that there is interesting as well. Now, the next one is across the River Jordan, or yeah, the Jordan River. The next one is from here. Him and Jephthah are, are from this area here. And so Jair is the first one that's on the east side. You notice that? It's on the east side of the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. And so let's read verses 3 and 4. And he. And after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel twenty-two years. And he had thirty sons that rode on thirty ass colts, and they had thirty cities, which are called Havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Camon. Um, let's see, and Camon is right here. Now it's spelled with a C in your Bible, but in other places in Scripture it's spelled with a K. And so... Um, that's where he died was there. Now, th he is the first judge from the east side of Jordan. He's named after a famous grandson of Manasseh who took some small towns in Gilead and Bashan that he named after himself. Now, now look at this, because this guy here, this judge, did the same thing that one of his ancestors did. Now, now look at this. Look at Numbers 32. There's a little bit more history about this guy than there was Tola. But look at Numbers chapter 32. All right, Numbers 32, and look at verse 41. And Jair, now look at 40, and Moses gave Gilead unto Maker, and the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took the small towns thereof, and called them Havoth Jair. And that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, look at Deuteronomy chapter 3. So this guy did the same thing. Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 14. Uh, Deuteronomy 3.13, And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob with all Bashan, which was called the land of the giants. Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the country of Argob under the coasts of Geshurai and Maacathai, and called them after his own name, Bashan, Havoth, Jair, unto this day. And I gave Gilead unto Maker. And that sets you up for this judge. This judge here in Judges chapter 10, is his name is Jair also. And so, now verse... Verse 4, and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities which are called Havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Now, Havoth Jair is the name used by the Jews to refer to a certain group of villages on the east of the Jordan. Havoth Jair means hamlets of Jair. That's what it means. Jair means he enlightens. Okay, so Jair. He enlightens, or God enlightens, because J-A is Jehovah, right? So that's what that's for. And... His inheritance was in Gilead through the line of Machir, son of Manasseh. We already saw that in Scripture. But it is said that Jair surpassed Abimelech in wickedness. Okay? He surpassed him. Jair created an altar unto Baal, and on penalty of death he forced the people to bow down before the image. 
seven men, now it's told in this tale, that seven men remained firm and refused to commit idolatry. They said to Jair, we are mindful of the lessons given us by our teachers and our mother Deborah. Then they said, take heed that your hearts lead you not astray to the right hand nor to the left. Day and night ye shall devote yourselves to the study of the law. Why then dost thou seek to corrupt the people of the Lord? If he really is a God, then let him speak like a God, and we will pay him worship. So basically they told Jair that if he's really a God, then let him speak, and, and we'll worship him. Of course, he didn't. Now, since they spoke against Baal, Jair commanded that the all seven of these men be burnt. But before the, uh, the orders carried out, but before they, they, were, they were to take him, they were gathering twigs and everything, and they, uh, according to history, they were going to light it on fire. Before, before they could light it on fire to kill these seven men, the man that was trying to light the fire died. The, the, the fire came back on them or something. And so they, and then they miraculously escaped unnoticed. The seven men did. So it, it is said in history that an angel helped them escape by blinding the eyes of these men. Now, I, I don't know if that's true. That's just what it said. Well, Jair is said to be later to be burned alive with about 10,000 men whom he had taken in the act of paying homage to Baal, along with Baal as well. So the whole place burns to the ground. So the fire, see how that fire works, he, he's going to burn the seven men, they escape, and, and Jair runs back to the temple, he and 10,000 priests of Baal die, and Baal the idol of Baal itself is burned to the ground. <laughs> so it's like that fire comes back upon him. Now, during this time in history, this is in, in Greece, Theseus captured Helena. But Castor and Pollux, the brothers of Theseus, along with their mother, were captured. The, uh, at, during this time also is when the city of Carthage was also built. So that gives you the timeline of what's going on during, during Judges chapter 10. And then also Mizpah invented the Latin alphabet during this time. This is where Latin comes from. It's during the same time of this judge. Now, in now, Tola and Jair, they co-ruled for one year during this time as well. So they overlapped by about a year. So that, that's just uh, your history for that. Now then, look, look at verse 4. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities which are called Havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. So Jair's sons served as judges under him, but each boy ruled over his particular city in Gilead. Now, the, it says that, that they rode on 30 ass colts. You have to realize, now we talked about this before, that asses were the Cadillac the limousine for rulers in Bible times, okay? There was something for them to get a ride on an, uh, an ass colt or something like that. But these ass colts point prophetically to the Jewish saints who return with Jesus Christ at, at the second coming to rule and reign with him. And we looked at that in chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Now the judges of Israel are also called the governors of Israel and are the ones that ride on white asses. Historically, it's a reference to the judges who served under the main judge. See, Jair was the main judge. His sons served as the governors underneath him, which were judges as well. Often, the other judges were relatives of the main judge. Uh, we'll see that in chapter 12. 
I remember 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Um, Samuel's sons were judges, but they only had, oh, they were only over a specific part of the land of Israel. They didn't rule over the whole thing like Samuel did. And usually that's the, those judges under the main judge were the sons of a main, the main judge. And Jair died and was, ba built, uh, was buried in Camon. Verse 6, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam and Ashtaroth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord, and served not him. So what follows is a period characterized by almost utter abandonment of the people to idolatry. And thank you to the judge, Jair, because he's the one that started it all. And it is because he's more wicked than Abimelech. So the list of the gods by which idolatry took effect is, is just awful. Judgment came by the Philistines and Ammon and continued for 18 years. Now verse 6 lists the gods that Israel decided to serve. Verse 7, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. So the very people that vexed and oppressed Israel, now get this, the very people that vexed and oppressed Israel are the same people whose gods Israel served. It doesn't make any sense. They're serving the gods of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines, and in so doing, they're serving the people and those kings of, Phil of the Philistines and Ammonites. It makes no sense. And so those gods aren't going to be able to help Israel. They're going to, if the gods did anything, they would take the side of the people that served them, right? Now notice the nations mentioned here in verse 6. You have the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. Now Syria, Zidon, Moab, Ammon, and the Philistines, all five of these are connected with Ham. Okay, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, the Zidonians come from Canaan. Now, you're, and now hold your place here in Judges because we'll be coming back, but turn to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. Now, I want, I'm going to show you something because these gods that they served are the same gods that Solomon served. Okay? And they're from the tribe of Ham. All five are connected with Ham, son of Noah. The Zidonians, they come from Canaan. Genesis chapter 10, look at verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Phut and Canaan. Look at verse 15. And Canaan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Heth. So this is the same Zidon as the Zidonians. Same one. Now the Moabites and Ammonites were from Lot's daughters, whose mother was an Egyptian of the line of Ham and Canaan. See that? Look at, look at chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. And then look at verse 13. And Mizraim begat Ludim, and Anamim, and Lahabim, and Latuhim, and Pathrusim, and Casluhim, out of whom came Philistim, and Kaphtarim. So there you have who the who the Philistines were. Uh, the Philistines were from Mizraim, son of Ham. So we see that. Now, while the gods of Syria are nowhere given by name in Scripture, the rest of them are. Zidon was the seat of Baal and Ashtaroth. Uh, if, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 33, and chapter 16, verse 31, you'll see that Zidon always was connected with Baal and Ashtaroth. The Moabites worshipped Chemosh. The Ammonites worshipped Milcom. 1 Kings 11, verse 33, once again. 
Uh, you can also find that in, oh, the Philistines worship Dagon. Judges 16, 23, 1 Samuel 5, 2. And they also served Beelzebub, which is Baal, Baal here in Judges. Of course, these were polytheistic societies which had a plethora of gods. But those are the ones named in Scripture. They were the main gods. They had other little gods underneath them, sub-gods, demigods, if you will. But what about Syria? Now, now, Syria is different, and Syria, their gods are not mentioned in Scripture. Um, but ancient Syria was once ruled by the Akkadians. If you've got your finger there in Genesis chapter 10, look at Genesis chapter 10. And I was watching quite a few things on this this week because it really ties in. Um, look at chapter 10, verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom, this is talking about Nimrod, was Babel and Erech and Akkad. See that? The, Ak the Akkadians, which are, now we, it's spelled here A-C-C-A-D. But another spelling is A-K-K-A-D. Okay? And that's where you get your Akkadians. Now, these Akkadians came after a civilization called the Sumerians, not, not Samarians, the Sumerians. So the Akkadians came after the Sumerians. The Sumerians are the ones that lived at the Fertile Crescent during the time of the Judges. They, they, they owned the portion that comes up from here where, where the, uh, oh, what's that sea? Let, let me look here. Hold on just a second because I got a picture of it. And, but it's called the Fertile Crescent, uh, and it's where the Tigris and the Euphrates is. And uh, I forgot the, the, the name of the sea. It's the Persian Gulf, I think. I think th there's a Persian Gulf. And you can kind of see this is the land of the Sumerians, which right down here above this here, that's, that's where Eden is supposedly, the Garden of Eden is supposed to be. Same area. Okay, same area. Now, that's also the same air area as Ur of the Chaldees, which is where Abraham's from. Ur. So that tells you the timeline of when all this is going on. Now, the Sumerians were supposed to be living uh, around 55 to 6,000 B.C., which puts you before the universal flood, right? Because Adam supposedly 4,004 B.C. And these Sumerians, according to some of their literature and their, their tablets and stuff like that, date back 5,500 to 6,000 B.C., which is about 2,000 years before Adam was made. And so, now the Akkadians during that, now, I mean the Sumerians during that time are supposedly giants that ruled during that time as well, and we suppose that Satan's the one that ruled over them. Now there's a lot of history on the Sumerians and what was going on on the world at that time, and supposedly they were mining for gold. The Sumerians mined for gold, and the, the, the biggest place, and we'll see this in Genesis cha uh, chapter 2 tonight, that gold was heavy, heavy in this area of Ur of the Chaldees and during the Fertile Crescent where the Garden of Eden is. See where these uh, rivers, the four rivers that we're going to look at tonight, that, those four rivers surround this area. It's very, very, very interesting. But it's a land of gold, and Egypt was the main place of gold at that time. It's Havilah, the land of Havilah. 
So the Akkad is where the Sumerians came from. The Sumerians actually preceded them. Throughout ancient times, Syria was occupied and ruled by several empires. Among these are the Egyptians, the Hittites, the Sumerians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and the Canaanites, and others. They were all ruling over this area at that time, which they all came from Ham, right? Sumerian culture lived along the valleys of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, which dates back before 3000 BC around the time of Ham and Nimrod. Now, Nippur, Uma, Uruk, Eridu, Nina, Lagash, and Gursu are old towns of Sumeria, or what was called Sumer at that time. It was the kingdom of Sumer, and they had all these little towns and cities there. And in fact, I was watching something on, on the god Gilgamesh this week. And Gilgamesh was the ruler of Uruk during that time, which was Ur of the Cow. And so if you've ever heard of Gilgamesh, he was one of the kings over this area during this time, which is very interesting. And right in the middle of these Sumerian towns is a town called Ur. We know it as Ur of the Chaldees, Genesis chapter 11. Now, now look at uh, Genesis 11, look at verse 27. You should still be in Genesis there. But look at verse 27, because uh, I want to show you something here. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Izcah. Okay? Remember, Terah was the captain of Nimrod's army. In, in your history, Nimrod was the, or Terah was the captain of Nimrod's army. And so now, now look at Genesis 24. Genesis 24. And look at verse 15. Genesis 24, verse 15. Now this is, a, this is where Abraham is sending his servant to find Isaac a bride. Okay? Now I'm going to refer back to Genesis 11 here, so let me go back over here. So what we're looking at is, the, is the Abraham's family. And Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Now, Genesis 24, look at verse 15. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. So that tells you that it's of the same lineage. Abraham went back to his, his brother and to get a wife for Isaac. Okay? It was not uncommon during this time. In fact, uh, later, Rachel does the same thing for, for Jacob. Okay? It's the same thing. Now look at the same chapter, Genesis 24. Look at verse 29. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man under the well. Now look at chapter 25, verse 20. 25, verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. <laughs> so what that's saying is, is that these Sumerians, these of Ur of the Chaldees are Syrians. Because that's where they're from. And it calls Bethuel. That means before Abraham became a, a Hebrew, he was a Syrian. Very interesting, isn't it? 
Now the Syrians came from the line of Shem. So Achad came from the land, uh, the, the son of Ham, Canaan. Sumerians, but, but, but Abraham's family, the family of Terah, came from the line of Shem. Okay, now how, how did this happen? What's going on here? So the Syrians came from the line of Shem, but were idol worshippers of the, of the idols of the Sumerians. The Sumerians f were from Ham, or actually they preceded Ham. Okay, so before Ham was around, the Sumerians were already around. Now, the origin of the Sumerians is not known, but the people of Sumer refer to themselves as black headed ones. Okay, or black headed people. So, your Sumerians, this is what they called themselves. Were your black people? Now I don't care what Bible believers teach. The black people did not come from Ham, okay? Because these guys came before Ham. Now you know what happened? Ham intermarried with them. See, and so it is through the line of Ham, but there was black people before Ham. See, this is what was on the earth before the universal flood, and all the garbage going on that, that God destroyed the universe was because of these people. See, once you start studying this stuff here, it lines up perfectly. God called Abraham out of this so they wouldn't intermarry with Achad and the Sumerians. See that? Now, for example, the Sumerian king, Shulgai, described himself as the king of the four quarters, the pastor of the black-headed people. That's what he called himself. That's history. That's ancient history. So, once again, where did the black people come from? It was not Ham. But Ham's descendants, probably Canaan, mingled with the, with the Sumerians and the Akkadians and kept the line going. Okay? These were people black in color before Ham. Most historians think that Sumer was first permanently settled, now here it is, here's your timeline, between 5500 and 4000 BC, which will put the timeline before the universal flood, Adam and Eve being created 4004 BC around there, okay, we don't know exact timeline. Now the gods of the Sumerians are Inanna, goddesses of Europe and love of, of love and war, which in other societies is no is is Aphrodite, Diana, uh, today's Roman Catholic Mary. Um, it's it's none other but Astroth or Astarte, whatever. Enki was the god of wisdom. Eridu was the chief god. Sumerians believed in an anthropomorphic did you get that anthropomorphic polytheism or the belief in many gods in human form now anthropomorphic assigns human characteristics to non-human entities like animals or inanimate objects when you say anthropomorphic you're talking about animals having human characteristics or qualities. Okay, we're playing a game at the game store called Burrows and Badgers. What is it? We're playing anthropomorphic characters having human qualities. Okay, that's what that is. Now, it's basically humans, uh, animals with human traits. 
Enki in the south is at the temple in Eridu. I, I wish I had the, the map for, for this. It, it, that would help you to see it. And Enki was the god of bene, ben, beneficence and of wisdom. He was the ruler of freshwater depths between the, beneath the earth. He was a healer and friend to humanity who was thought to give humans the arts of and sciences, the industries of, and manners of civilization. The first law book was considered his creation. On was the full-time God equivalent to heaven. The word on in Sumerian means sky, and his consort key means earth. So you have on, and you have key, heaven and earth. And so your, your gods are called Anunnaki. You ever heard of the Anunnaki's? They're, they're from Ankh and Ki. Your Anunnaki, they're demigods, basically, in Sumerian mythology, not Greek. Now, they have the same, they have just different words in, in that. No. And then they had Enlil, which was the god of storm, wind, and rain. He was the chief god of the Sumerian pantheon and the patron god of Nippur. His consort or wife was Enlil, goddess of the south wind. Anana was the goddess of love, fertility, and war, the deification of Venus and Diana. The morning and evening star at the temple of Uruk is shared with On. Deified kings may have reenacted the marriage of Inanna and Demuzid with priestesses. So they reenacted it, probably. The sun god Utu at the town of Lorsa in the south and Sipper in the north. The moon god Sin at Ur the Chaldees. See, there was a moon god, his name was Sin at Ur the Chaldees. He was the god of Ur. Now these are the main gods, but there were hundreds of other minor gods. The Sumerians believed that the universe consisted, we'll, we'll get this and we'll be done, that the universe consisted of a flat disk enclosed by a dome. <laughs> what, what, what does this look like? Looks like a UFO, a flying saucer. That's what they thought the universe was. Very interesting, right? It's a flat disk in enclosed by a dome. The Sumerian afterlife involved a, a descent into a gloomy netherworld to spend eternity in a wretched existence as a ghost. <laughs> as a ghost. Remember Wednesday night we were talking about ghosts. Are ghosts real? So, yes, so we know that they are. And that ghosts, they're, they'll be coming. And we started, we showed the gulf here. And we, we put hell here and paradise here Wednesday night. And we put earth here. And remember Samuel, that, that the, the ghost of Samuel, his soul came up to Saul. Remember that? And so the, he, she said, I see gods, gods ascending out of the earth. See, those were ghosts. And so the Sumerian afterlife, where whatever that was, they believed that they went inside the earth and they wandered the inside as ghosts. So, any any comments or questions about that? So, an Egyptian, um, well, Egyptian.